Hey everyone, I'm Elephant Dice, and usually I make a video just with content about some D&D topic, but I figured that this week I would actually go over just Roll20. Um, obviously, if you haven't heard of it before, Roll20 is a tool that a lot of people use to play online. It's probably the most popular tool that people use online and i mean as you can see i have a few things here i have used it myself especially during the pandemic when i needed to play online because i didn't have the ability to play in person but um whether or not you don't have a group near you that you can play with or whether you just i don't know you, you if, if you if you want to play D&D online, Roll20 is a great resource. So I'm just going to use this video to basically go through how I use Roll20. And this is probably going to be a introductory like primer. And may, I'll, pr I'll probably have some more Roll20 content down in the pipeline. So my, my, um, my YouTube channel is Elephant Dice. And as you can see on the games that I've designed, I've made a new game which I, I clicked create a new game, but I'm not going to do that for purposes of this, but I made a new game, which is Elephant Dice. So when you want to, when, once you set up the game, you can set a thumbnail picture. Um, you can choose, you can choose like what you're playing. There's a place where you can actually add your players to. So you see invite players. All you need is to get your other players to have, to, have accounts and you just invite them to your game and then you just launch the game um yeah so roll 20 comes up and immediately you have the default square grid and i don't know what the dimensions of this are but basically you have a default square grid now things that are useful to know in roll 20 is you have this page area so this took me a long time to figure out at first but Basically, you can create a page. So say we want to say, say we want to have one area which is a cave, right? And say we want to just make another area which is cave, um, something that connects to a cave. So how about a um, wilderness, right? And in the wilderness, there's going to be the entrance to a cave. So, just, f you, you guys are probably wondering what this player banner thing is, but it doesn't really come into scope yet, but basically, when you have players loaded into the same game as you, um, where you move this banner will be where they have visuals. Um, just forget that for now, because that's really an in-the-weeds kind of detail, but um, I'm just going to switch this to dark mode because I stare at a computer screen all day and it's terrible, terrible for your eyes. Um, so I think the main thing is it can, when you start out on Roll20, it can be pretty intimidating to like just get used to any new like interface that you're using and any new new tool. But um, really, it's not not that bad at all. So what we have here is Roll20, the way I think of it, is kind of like... A pretty like poor quality photo editor but the cool thing is is we can snap things to grid and we have the scale of the grid so it's pretty intuitive and useful for built-in just plug and play um, you don't have to have stuff that's really great or that really works but really for you as the dungeon master the main thing you have to worry about is this right here which I, I guess that's like the layers tab but basically we have three layers which are map and background objects and tokens and the GM info overlay so each of these holds a different purpose but basically you want to go through it in this order right so let's start with map and background and the number one tip I will give to anyone when you're using roll 20 no matter what detail you go to, please, please, please make sure that you are paying attention to the layer that you are using. There have been so many times I've spent like half an hour of work and all of a sudden I look on my layers and I'm like, oh, I did all of that on the objects and tokens background, which the basically the distinction between these is map and back for these three layer types, map and background is just literally the map and background. It's static. It can't typically be moved um though you as the gm can move it 
Um, objects and tokens, anything you put down there, anyone can move unless you edit like the certain properties of objects and tokens. So please, please, for your own sanity, do not put stuff on objects and tokens because then either you're going to have to refactor them into a different layer or you're going to have to change the permissions on the tokens because your players can you can move them and then we have the gm info overlay and we have an opacity slider so i'm just going to make something really simple and we're just going to go from there so this i believe was cave so i'm just gonna probably start on the background layer yeah so the cool thing about roll 20 is you actually have um, kind of like a built-in search engine. So I'm just going to look up cave, but I imagine, yeah, so there's like, this is a premium asset. So when you first start Roll20, there's going to be premium assets and free assets. Personally, I have never used a premium asset, though if you really want to, there's a lot of nice built-in functionality. But there's like, all this stuff that's free that if you wanted to, you could drag and drop into your game. Now, again, this is just, I have to hit the selection. Yeah. Again, I'm in the background map and background layer. So I want to take note of where I'm putting things. Um, so I like to build things with like actual terrain. So let's just look up rock or something like that. Um, you don't have to go crazy. If you want, you can actually upload things. So where you want to be is to the place where you can upload things. So I'm just looking up rocks or rocky or stone, maybe. You, you kind of have to search for a few different things. Um, I These are things that I've actually uploaded myself. But... Rubble. There's a few things here and there. From the oh, from the web, not paying attention. So, all right, this works. So here from the web, I don't know where that went. Okay, let's try a different photo. This one. All right, there we go. So again, it's a lot of like trial and error, but here from the web, I have just piles of rocks that I found. So I can just like scale this however I want. It's normal, like you can right click and you can get all these like advanced like things and whatnot. But, and if you right click, you can actually check what layer a certain object is in. But really you can copy and paste this like a normal like photo editor or even um, like basically like MS paint. So I'm just getting like rocks down basically. Um, now I'm actually going to go into the settings of this page. So the way I did that was again, these are your page. This up here is your page toolbar. So I'm just going to go into settings and I'm going to just bring this in because we don't need nearly as much space as we have right now. So let's do 10 by 10 and I'm just going to change the background to gray. So for me, it feels more rocky. Um, yeah. All right. So I actually, yeah, that works actually, because that's a five by five grid. So I'm just trying to paste things. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just going to paste. It doesn't need to be, if you really want to, you can spend so much time and so much attention to detail doing things, but really you you don't have to. Um, so I'm making a cave here. Um, let me just think, what would be in a cave? Now, I think I looked at Brock earlier, but I don't think I looked at the from the web results. So, Now, the main thing when you're using things from the web and when you're uploading photos is you want an image that has like a transparent background because like I could drag like this photo in right now, but that's not going to do me any good because, you know, it's got like a background on it. So this is kind of frustrating how I can't find like a good texture or something like that. But. All right, I mean, 
yeah this is better results but basically you kind of want to it takes a little bit of like mm, that looks horrible um how about just wall all right i know we said we were doing a cave but we're gonna do all right it's a cave with brick with brick in it basically let's go with that all right Ooh, that's actually a really nice texture so i'm just gonna decrease the size of this object significantly so i mean yeah so i know i said it was a cave but really we could have it that this is a cave this is just the gravel and the rocks lying around and then in the middle of the cave there is like a pit or something like that with like laid masonry like mason stones right so let's just kind of go off of that let's see what's in this pit right so let's say i want torches right so there's a lot of built in again you want to find ones that are um not like this right here that's it's gonna have a white background or it doesn't even render on it yeah i don't know um so you gotta sometimes get creative with like the names of things so let's just look up light right that's a token that i've made actually but i'll make a video on tokens in an upcoming video but this is very frustrating um my library because i have all these things that i have some i've uploaded but most of them i have not um but basically if you want to you can like make as you can see i've <laughs> made a ton of tokens with just like pictures right out of books and things that i've just photoshopped in so let's just say that on this because i'm just shooting from the hip right now on this in the middle of this cave there is a strange stone thing and i don't know why that's not i'm just gonna drag this so i think All right, that works, and it did it twice. Great. All right, in the middle of the cave, you know, you walk into a cave, and all of a sudden there's a strange brick-laid floor in the middle of it. And on these bricks, there is this strange, like, malefic, magical circle that seems to glow or an orangish red and give off signs of like necromancy or some something like that right so you don't it really is depends on how much time you want to put into this like i can make this look really good if you want i can show you um my other maps if you want but everything really depends on how much time you want to sink into it so for this i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go into it i'm just gonna just slap things on here and whatnot so I have a lot of, as you can see, like tokens that I've made myself from like art that I've just Googled. But um, let's say in the middle of the circle, there is a corpse, right? So there's definitely free corpses, but I, from your library, from the web, human because roll 20 should have its own built in yeah free assets so townsfolk all right let's just make it interesting so in the middle of this flaming circle let's just say that there's like a noble right and the default, I think, for these guys. Now, if you notice, I switched to the objects and token layer. So what we can do is we can actually make these guys... Um, we can edit the properties of every object we put on. And we can actually, like, 
give them circles. If you can't really see, because it's pretty hard to see sometimes, we can put like a super small radius circle around them and tint it a certain color. So say I want that student or whoever that I placed on this to be an enemy, right? I typically do aura one and two, but you really don't have to do that. Oh, uh, yep, that's the same aura like thing. But um, that's terrible. It doesn't mix with the thing. But say that there's like a wizard here who is like praying here. And, and I think this is something I made, but you can literally make any image you want in like GIMP or Photoshop. So I made an altar. This is my own like PNG that I uploaded to. Um, oh, but I made a rookie mistake, if you notice. My rookie mistake was... I started off the video by putting the terrain on, and then I went to the token layer. But I just almost put the altar into the token layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm instead switching to the map and background, and I'm going to drag the altar on. And you can drag it on, I believe. It's been a while since I've used Roll20. Yep, yeah, if you hold, is it Alt or is it Shift? Yeah, or control. That looks like. Yeah, so normally when you're resizing objects in roll 20, it'll snap to the closest grid. But I think if you hold, yeah, if you hold alt, you will actually be able to snap it wherever. So, and if you notice, this is just a side note. I'm kind of scattered <laughs> with what I'm saying. But um, if you notice, when I switched back to the background layer, the character, the token that I made became transparent because we're on a different layer. So Roll20 has some built-in stuff so you can see stuff. But say you walk into a cave, there's rocks like thrown about the room. There's this strange magic circle in the middle. There's some sort of caster standing before an altar not far from it. And basically, this is the basic mechanics of stuff. You can literally put in details of the character into these three values so for me i like to do hp armor class and then i like to do speed just because um it's useful to keep track of like speed and i don't actually like have like a good thing to put in this third like column because mana is not really a thing so say that my spellcaster or my necromancer or whatever say they have 38 hit points right and say they have an armor class of 16 and they're human so they have a speed of 30 feet right that's literally all the stuff you need to do right now whenever this necromancer is in combat and if i want to affect their hp or their armor class or whatever I can actually type in the mathematical operations just by clicking on these circles and they will be applied. So for example, say you roll an attack with a long sword and you, you're, you roll six damage, right? I can do minus six in with their HP selected and it'll automatically do the calculation for you. But say they heal themselves six more points and they go back up to full. You can do it either way. And um, the chat window, actually, because I've played in situations where a lot of players don't even have dice, right? You can actually roll and you can use, like, dice notation. So I think it's, like, 3d6 plus, let's say 18 is a ridiculous modifier. But let's just say, like, you needed to roll 3d6 plus 5, right? It actually gives you the... You can use roll 20 as the conduit for like your rolls. And there's actually, I would have to ask my players, but there's actually a way once you make a character sheet to set up stuff. So going back to what we're doing, we have a background, we have, um, we have an enemy. Um, let's just go to the last thing, right? Which is the token overlay, or I'm sorry, not token overlay, the GM info overlay. So this this layer I like to use just for my own GM notes, right? So we can edit the opacity, but really, if you go down to the paintbrush, there's an option for text, and I like I usually like to make it something vibrant, so I literally cannot miss it. 
So I'm just going to go with this blue because it completely stands out. And I'm going to make the text abnormally large because I'm blind. Um, and I'm going to say, oh, that blue looks terrible. Let me just change that. Green? Of course, it doesn't change. All right. If you want to clear all the drawings from a layer, you can just hit clear drawings. But keep in mind that when you clear drawings, it'll clear everything, I think, from all layers. But also, like, you may lose stuff. So don't do that unless you really have to. I think I actually could have just hit Control-Z to undo that text just there because I was having trouble select it, selecting it. rather. Um, let's try this green. Tests. That's still disgusting. Um... I need something darker because that's basically like white. So how about just black text? You know what? Oh, that's terrible. All right. We're just go big or go home. We're just going to do an obnoxious color, but obnoxiously large because I think that still gets the point across. Um, DC. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm just going to go red. Oh, my God. Okay, control Z does not work. Well, this this is definitely for those watching this. This is definitely an experience, no doubt. Um, so let, I just usually do this for like the checks or maybe notes or things I want to read out loud. So say I want to say that as the players approach, they see like a strange either the symbol in the magic circle or they see something on the altar or the way that the necromancer is dressed and they want to figure it out so i just have like dc like 15 religion and it's like he's i i don't think this deity is in fifth edition but Neril was the god of death in previous editions of the game really cool i think it just in like 3.5 but a really cool dude all around a really cool dude now there should be a way I'm looking like a absolute noob right now, but that's fine. Okay, I did select the text box, which is interesting because I wasn't wasn't able to do that earlier. Control all. Ah, I can. Selecting the text. No. Well, point is, is when you're going to put text down, make sure that you put it in a size that you think is an adequate size. Because, again, I think I said it. Roll20 is really nice because it's like a, it's like a really crappy text editor. But it... Or not text editor. Photo editor. But... It's also a really crappy photo editor. So you might have to deal in, with like growing pains of actually like dealing with the software and whatnot. But um, DC 14 religion and it's a shrine or an altar to Neril who is in at least third edition was a god of death. I don't actually think they're part of fifth edition anymore. But um, really simple, whatever. And basically... This right here could be an adventuring area. So, and I believe there's a fog of war option. So, maybe I'll have to, because I haven't, I actually, I ran a campaign online for a few months during like COVID. Oh, reset fog. So if you want to do fog of war, you can set fog of war. So now nobody should be able to see it um so actually let me just show you because this is really important so if you're doing all this stuff and you're concerned that maybe you missed something or you want to see what your players see you can rejoin click this button to rejoin as the player now all right i screwed up the fog of war that's great so if you notice the text and the information that was on the dm guild layer or the guild, uh, DM info overlay rather, it's completely gone because I can't see it when I'm looking at it 
from the perspective of a player. So that's exactly what this is. If you click on the gear, you'll be able to toggle your view as the GM and as the player, and you'll be able to understand what your players are looking at. Now, I swear that that was a thing for Fog of War. Hide from others. Oh, I think I know what it is. So yeah, so you have this option to hide areas. And I, I don't know what the premium... Yeah, so that is what enables Fog of War. Is the first time you go under the cloud and you try to hide areas and whatnot. So now if I rejoin as a player... Yeah, now you can't see anything because I grayed out the whole thing, right? But as you're in the game and as you're in the game and your players are like exploring along like a path or something like that, you can go and you can reveal areas and this used to be like super glitchy. It's probably still really super glitchy. But now I've revealed an area that they can play in. So if I have like a player, I'm just going to drag a token of one of my players in, right? So let's just grab Shakti, right? Right, so I've got Shakti here, right? He's just chilling. He has like a torch or whatever. I can like visually like, what? oh, it's cause I'm not on the selection pane. So he can like, um, literally that's what he sees. And from the player's point of view, he should i'm i'm seeing what my player shakti can see where he can see the box that i've highlighted so there's a lot of cool things you can do a lot of awesome like interactions you can do and you can use lighting effects too which i think lighting effects are really great um i'll move probably make a follow-up episode on like making character sheets because there's all this functionality up here aside from the stuff that's here I'll probably make a follow-up video on like uploading art and like making specific custom tokens because you might not like these these tokens. Um, another thing is you can use your arrow keys to move these tokens around. And I think the only other thing I really wanted to cover in this video was I just wanted to show you guys what you can accomplish with Roll20. So this was really simple. I've been talking through and making this and it looks pretty kind of crappy not gonna lie but the reason it does is because there's not much effort that was really put into this i'm a bit rusty also but like um you know if you put time and if you import your own art via like photoshop or um i use gimp which is a free photoshop um i'm just gonna show you guys what you can accomplish so this is my homebrew campaign which is dry Noct for dungeons and dragons which i've been writing this playing this for years and um if you really get in to the weeds of this you know it can get extremely complicated like this is this actually isn't like a super complicated wow that's yeah but um you know this my players like there's a lot going on here and all these tokens are different like monsters and things and you can get pretty complex like this is a dungeon this is pretty I, I like this this took me probably like two hours to make but you know i've made all these different dungeons and things just that my players have walked through and you know the cool thing is is you can you can set things up so that they lead into each other so let me just try to find an example of this. So I had this area called the fence farms. Um, and I think I had, does this not have it? Oh, that would be unfortunate. Yeah, I do not think it has it, which is very unfortunate. Unless, which point of view am I using? rejoin his player now i'm looking at it with the dungeon master or the gm's perspective but something that i like to do because it, it saves you so much like housekeeping i think this might have it i'm just loading this page yeah so you see how i have on the gm info layer i have these notes that says it's two 
like Fern's Watchtower, to the Waybrook Crossing, to the Marshland Plains. What I do is I like to um, kind of build it almost like an old school like RPG where like if my players decide to go down this path, that's then the map that I populate, right? Um, I hope that makes sense. I, I, it make it makes a lot of sense to me, but it's just it's just a trick that I use just for like housekeeping, so I don't have to worry about making all this stuff. Cause like I when I made a lot of this stuff, it was in batches, so I made like four or five maps at a time, but they all interconnected. So then, if my players wanted to explore an area, I didn't have to make something like from scratch like you just saw me in the beginning of the video i had areas like prepared more or less um but yeah so i think that's the video for now just again like a super simple like stab at like roll 20 what you can accomplish with it how you can set it up i'll probably make some more follow-up videos on this in the time to come especially because right now i'm in classes so i'm pretty busy and it had definitely haven't had time to like edit videos to a great extent so i have a lot of content on the horizon but a lot of it is just stuff i've got to get through and get to editing but if you if you like this video like the video um please subscribe to my youtube channel again i'm elephant dice and yeah thank you so much have a good one bye